to our webinar, How to Personalize Single Page Apps Using .CMS's Headless Capabilities. I'm Alexandra Barcelona, Director of Marketing at .CMS, and I'll be today's moderator. To get us started, I'd like to go through a couple of housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to everyone who registered after the webinar. We'll also have a Q&A session at the end with our speakers, so if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to add them to the chat box as we go along. And now let's jump into our agenda. We'll start with speaker introductions. We'll then go into personalized single page apps with .CMS, the future of headless.cms. We'll see a demo of what it means to personalize single page apps in .CMS. And then we'll start a look at the new capabilities on the horizon for .CMS. We'll follow it all up with a Q&A at the end. And now to introduce today's speakers, we have Stefan Schenkel and Willie Zell. And with that, I will pass it over to you, Stefan. Thanks, Alex. Good day, everyone. Coming off the uh, latest release of .CMS uh, version 5.2, uh, we're really excited to uh, dive into one of the key capabilities of .CMS uh, that is helping brands to differentiate by uh, delivering hyper-personalized uh, experiences. Now, having a personalization strategy as part of your pursuit uh, of your digital ambition is paramount. Uh, whether you are optimizing or transforming uh, your business. And with that CMS, uh, we want to help uh, brands by bringing uh, the content foundation as a service so you can create those connected, uh, trusted and continuous experiences. And because the days of just managing a website uh, are long gone, uh, the experience layer where customers, prospects, distributors, partners, etc., connect with your brand has changed uh, dramatically. Uh, it's really becoming uh, an omni-channel ecosystem with IoT devices, uh, digital signage, uh, mobile devices, point of sales, and apps. And so whether it's that a single page app or a progressive web app, doesn't really matter. It's, it's been quite a change, uh, but it's definitely not a drama. Um, delivering hyper-personalized uh, experiences and to orchestrate each of these touch points is actually very easy with uh, .CMS. And obviously in this uh, webinar, we would like to focus uh, on this uh, with one example uh, that's uh, very popular uh, these days, uh, really diving into uh, personalization uh, of single page apps. Uh, so I want to hand over to Will to show uh, how that looks like in, uh, in .CMS. Will, can you show the magic? Thanks, Stefan. Before we begin uh, talking about how uh, the personalization can be used with the .CMS APIs to deliver headless personalized uh, experience, I did want to talk a little bit about just you know edit mode anywhere and the headless capabilities of .CMS. You can see what I have here is a new starter site that .CMS is going to be offering when you download .CMS, and it, you know a luxury travel site has a number of different destinations. You know, based upon your interest, you can, you know, you can go to uh, Costa Rica or you can go to, you know, the ski resorts, what have you. And, you know, based upon that, this, the system's automatically going to recommend blogs for you. And even there'd be an e-commerce shop built in as well, just as an example, how, you know, products can be personalized as well. From a single page app, our, we're in the process of updating our SPA, our .CMS SPA to really provide a similar experience just from a headless perspective. So this is the same this is the same site running our single page app. Our single page app is on github.cms.cms SPA and it's a re based on React, though it doesn't have to be, right? .cms's page API really allows you to deliver page and layout and template type information to any server side rendered site so you could be this could be an ASP or a .NET site or it could be view site based on view or angular or what have you um, it really doesn't matter 
the, the ability to deliver the information into a third party system is really what's important there. So the single page app in .CMS is using a couple uh, features that are built into .CMS, things like navigation as a service. So this navigation here, if we go back and take a look at the, the traditional website, this is being driven by the same API calls that are driving the navigation here, right? And you know, additionally, the, the different content pulls, the ability to pull content dynamically based on the metadata around that content, you know, that's all being done here, just like it would be on any you know, traditional website. So you know, that said, this is, um, this is just an example of uh, the SPA. Let me log in and get started with the Edit Mode Anywhere capabilities. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And once I'm logged in, I can come to what we call edit mode. And this is the, the editing capability that is built into .CMS. It's a, you know, it allows for in-context editing uh, and layout design. So you can do things like, um, you know, you can drag and drop the different components to different areas. Um, you can reorder those components based upon, you know, the different properties and the different templates that can be dropped. And um, you can see as well that you can browse around in edit mode and you know based upon your permissions you're going to have the ability to to edit uh, different pieces of content or different content areas within the system so i can say okay um, here i'm going to add custom packages exclamation point the, the beauty of edit mode I, I won't go too too much further into it but you can do things like change the layout of a page or what have you. And this is really sort of traditional content editing um, and managing a traditional site. So what I'm going to do now is jump over and take a look at our sites and see here that I have a site called webinar.cms.io. And I can, on a site-by-site -site basis in .cms, I can actually add a proxy URL that will do a proxy request and return the uh, data from that proxy request to populate what edit mode looks like. And, uh, you know, it's on our site, there are diagrams that, that demonstrate what this looks like. I think I talked about it in the previous webinar, but I'll just come back and now take a look at what we see in edit mode. And you can see here that if I come to the Colorado page, instead of being presented with the traditional uh, website, what I'm being shown here is now the uh, single page app, right? And this single page app has all the capabilities that the traditional uh, management of uh, content within .CMS has. So for example, if I want to, I can come and say, you know what, I'm gonna drag this over here and drag this up here and I can change the layout of the particular page. So I could say, uh, you know what, let's make this a three column and add a new container here and say, okay, this is a new editable area that people can engage with and make manageable. But I have full control over what that layout looks like, right? And I can choose to have a banner or not. I can choose what my content is going to, uh, what my content's going to look like there as well. And all these changes that I'm making when I go ahead and I publish my page, all these changes I'm making, again, keep in mind, I know it, it's, you know, it's sort of uh, invisible, but this is a single page app. I come back to my single page app and look at Costa Rica, and you can see here that the changes that, um, that I've made to the page have been made as well, right? So I can even do things here, for example, if I want to add a call to action, let's add the uh, contact us form, for example, and that doesn't look right. So why don't we change the layout and delete that and drag this here, right? And it's all drag and drop very easy to manage, very easy for your business users to work with. And come back to the content, and now you can see I have custom packages with a form that's been dropped in and styled. Again, this is on, this is within my single page app. 
So let's talk a little bit about what we can do with personalization. So in .CMS 5.2, what we introduced is the ability to personalize a page uh, based on different personas, right? And so if I wanted to create, I can create a new persona here. Let's say this is uh, someone, you know, from, from Boston, right? So let's create a from Boston, and this is going to be, the t these are tags. So this is the, the key tag of the persona that's going to drive the, the personalization. Um, I can upload a, a an image that's going to define what that persona is. You can also add other tags that when someone is falls into the from Boston bucket, they're going to automatically have those tags associated with them. Um, I'm going to run find a for Boston image. Give me one sec here. All right, so let's find an image that represents Boston, whether you want it to or not. There's an image that represents Boston, Tom Brady. And just uh, just a note, I am a long-suffering Miami Dolphins fan, so I use that with a sad heart. Um, in any event, coming back to personalization example, you can see here now I've added my persona, my from Boston persona, and I'm previewing what the page is going to look like. Uh, actually, let's go to, let's personalize this page. Okay, this is the destination landing page when someone first comes to the site we want to personalize, you know, this page because this will have uh, this is drive them further in the site based upon our personalization. So the next step in the personalization process is to be able to to add rules. Okay, so what we've done in five two is we surface rules um, right at the page level, and you can say on any given page you can say you can create a rule. I'm from Boston, and we can open the rule and say it a condition of when this rule is going to be activated. Uh, so this rule be activated when the visitor's location is, and let's here, let's geolocate the visitor here uh, and say, okay, so the visitor's from Boston here. Make it a little narrower. Okay. And when the visitor's from Boston, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the persona to the from Boston persona. And I can go ahead and save that rule. Um, so this rule is saying when the visitor comes uh, to the site from Boston, they're going to be automatically dropped into the Boston, I'm from Boston bucket. So coming back to the page, you can see here now we're previewing what this page looks like from Boston. And this page doesn't have any personalization, either uh, explicit or implicit, right? And you can do both in .TMS. You can have you know, based upon the tags and the personas of a visitor, you can, um, you know, drive content or you can actually create these rules that are going to go ahead and build the segments and, and drop um, visitors into segments based upon any of those different rules. And before I move on, I just wanted to share these rules. I'm going to say it again, are all, this is a, an extension point in .CMS. You can create your own custom rules. So if you have a customer data platform, you can create a rule here that will automatically reach into there, get the profile uh, or the context for the visitor, and based upon that, perform certain actions. And um, you know, these are just out of the box conditions. And what happens here? These again, these actions here are again extensible. So you can add your own actions. You know, if you want to do perform some sort of action, like you know, send send data back to your customer data platform, what have you. So coming back to our page. Let's go ahead in the personalization process and let's personalize this page from for people from Boston. So I click edit and it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to personalize this content for people from Boston? So what I'm going to say is I do. And what I want to do is I want to not show that banner. I want to show another banner. I want to show, let's see, a new banner. And this is called... Um, don't you wish you were here? And for this image, I'm going to go ahead and drop this webinar image here of a beach in Fiji, right? And I can change the layout here. I can add a caption. What are you waiting for? Uh, inquire now. And so for my link, I'm going to go, I'm going to link it to the French Polynesia page and come back to my link. 
and this can be tagged as well. So let's say, let's tag it as from Boston, tag it as um, water enthusiast and uh, surfing, you know, what have you. Go ahead and save that. So once I've done that, you can see I can cruise back and take a look at my, this is what a default visitor would see. And this is what a visitor from Boston would see. But let's say I want to go further. Let's say I want to, I don't know, collect a form entry for someone, um, you know, coming from Boston. What I can do is I can say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to remove that particular piece of content. I'm going to add um, just a little bit of rich text. Uh, you want to learn more, act now. And then I'm going to add under that a form, the contact us form. And so what you can see here is that now I've personalized this page. And again, I think the important thing to note here is this is all happening in a single page app, right? So um, even the, the editing, all of these different things that I'm doing are all happening within the single page app. And I can go ahead and publish this page. And now, just to put it all together, you can see, okay, don't you wish you were here is being shown for people who have been personalized um, or categorized or personified, I guess, as uh, visitors from Boston. That's based upon this, these rules, which is saying I'm from Boston, right? And it's a geolocated map and it's going to set the persona from Boston. And then based upon that, that's what the visitor is going to see. So if I jump over here to a private browsing session, you can see here that I'm looking at the SPA from a private browsing session. And again, this is a single page app. It's, you know, it's all happening client side. But if I come to destinations and come to our destination, you can see here that the rule was fired uh, and it's saying you are from Boston. I live north of Boston and showing me the contact us form. And again, this contact us form is being displayed in the single page app and being rendered out. It's actually uh, built out of web components and uh, in a JavaScript library that we have available as well. And the beauty of this is that all this context information is available to you for use, uh, not just in your, not just in your, your website, but also right in your single page app. So for example, here, if I take a look at our destinations and then come and visit the My Profile page, you can see here what's being delivered to me in the My Profile page is based upon the persona we've been dropped into. Here, we've been dropped into from Boston, the device that we're on, we're on a computer uh, using Chrome, we're a new visitor, we have the following tags associated with us, and we have the following geolocation information as well. And you can see here as I scroll out, I'm from Boston. So all the tools that are available to you to, to, to build a, a really compelling user experience are available to you as well, no matter what technologies you choose to, to deliver the content from .cmsn. So just to reiterate what we've seen here with Edit Mode Anywhere is that really .cms, Edit Mode Anywhere is a game-changing feature when delivering content and layouts into single page apps or any really remote rendered environment, including, you know, maybe it's a native application that's running on a, you know, a kiosk or something like that. Edit Mode Anywhere gives the ability to, to offer every single feature in .cms, not just the content or content as a service, but, you know, in this case, we're showing personalization can be completely managed via Edit Mode Anywhere. Every feature that .cms offers in site to be able to manage content from the inline editing capabilities, the contextual capabilities to the, the preview capabilities. For example, here, if I want to see what this page is going to look like on a phone for you know, Boston visitors, this is what it's going to look like on a phone from Boston visitors. Every capability that .cms offers is available in Edit Mode Anywhere, and it really is, in my mind, a game changer for delivering uh, manageable client-side and single-page app experiences.
So I wanted to end the webinar today, talk a little bit about where we see .CMS going uh, with regard to headless capabilities in the future. And like everything that we do, .CMS, we work to try to bridge the gap between two distinct audience groups. We try to bridge the gap between marketers and developers. And you know, we feel that marketers are a real underserved group when it comes to headless content delivery. And I think our edit mode anywhere and the tools that we're layering in to that we show our commitment to re-empower the business users to uh, be able to control um, more than just content uh, within a headless environment. But future forward, we're going to continue to build out our headless tooling, which is going to include uh, headless analytics, visitor tracking. Um, so, you know, we are working in the in the .CMS core right now on visitor analytics, and and right now this is happening on you know the .CMS servers, but it does register as you know all of the visitor information as well as API calls, what have you. But we also need to record events and track events headlessly and in headless environments. You know, even if .CMS is not being called in the delivery of those those you know applications or our single page apps. And, you know, layering on that, just like we've done with personalization, experiments and testing, right now working on A-B testing and moving forward, anything that we do to build into the core delivery tier of .CMS, we're also going to be delivering to the headless community, the headless environments as well. So uh, to be able to offer headless experiments and testing is a, is a real key component of you know what we're doing here future forward uh, and next for developers and I, I do mean next is and this is something that's um, under development now is uh, replacing our single page app we you know we wrote a sort of a proof of concept node server to deliver the single page app and the isomorphic rendering we're going to under the covers we're going to replace that with next.js which next.js can can run servers can also do universal rendering and has some other really neat capabilities so and this is important, I think, for marketers too. Next.js gives us basically gives us first hit a server side render, and then subsequent hits are client side delivery. So, what that means and the benefits of that is that uh, you can have a single page app that is fully optimized for SEO, uh, because when spiders come in to crawl the site, they're going to be seeing a statically delivered version of the site. You know, whereas your customers, the first page and the you know time to first byte is going to be fast. The first page is going to be delivered server side, but all subsequent pages, as they navigate around or engage with the site or application, all of that it will be handled client side. So you'll have the performance of a single page app with the SEO friendliness of a server side rendered app. So we're excited about that. And we're also exploring going deeper with our work with Gatsby. So we did proof of concept with Gatsby. Uh, we're using our GraphQL APIs, delivering content into Gatsby, having Gatsby render that content out statically. Um, and I think it was sort of a, a news or a blog site, what have you. But we want to move further with Gatsby and actually deliver pages. And, and just like we do in our single page app, we want to deliver pages in Gatsby and deliver have Gatsby deliver those out and statically render those, including full preview capability and management capability. So that's what we're looking into um, with regard to Gatsby and static. <coughs> and, um, and with that concludes uh, my portion of the webinar, and I'll hand it back to Alex. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan and, uh, and Will, for, the, for that insight. Um, I'd like to get us started now and going through a couple of uh, questions that we got throughout the webinar. Um, let me just pull some of those up. So the first question that we have from everyone um, is, which system are you using for headless analytics? Are you using Google Analytics? Right now, we're using Google Analytics, but there's no requirement for Google Analytics. Um, you know, you can use any number of analytic tools uh, that that can work in headless environments. Um, there's even aggregators, companies that aggregate uh, the, the analytic data collection, things like segment.io segment I think it is which is you know offers a analytic js and you can add that to your client and then from 
their console, you can say, oh, send this data to Google Analytics and send it to your, uh, you know, to Marketo or send it to what, wherever you want to send uh, the analytic data. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't work sort of agnostic at this point as to what analytic provider to use for headless analytics. Um, but uh, moving forward, we will be providing our own headless analytics um, that will tie in with the tooling that's built into .CMS already. Okay, um, so then for the next question is, what if I want to use Vue rather than React? Well, that, it's fine. I mean, we edit mode anywhere as a capability doesn't require any specific um, client-side technology. What we do look for though, and it is is uh, the ability for it to be server-side rendered. Um, and Vue, you can use, you know, Nux.js or Quasar to, to server-side render Vue apps. And um, the, the, the server-side render component isn't a hard requirement, but I, I, they would take some work to be able to just, to be able to point it at a static client and, um, and allow that to become manageable as well. But, you know, Angular, uh, view, it really doesn't matter to us as long as uh, the application can do server-side rendering. Okay. Um, we have another question looks like here, um, but it looks like it still uses the .CMS APIs. Uh, how can I make a site completely static? Well, so when you're editing or the editing experience is going to require the .CMS APIs, I think that that's just um, going to be part of any editing experience. So you might have to have an authoring environment that's set up to, to provide, you know, both the server-side rendered view of your single page app and the, um, you know, and the .CMS API connectivity there. But, you know, I think once, the app has been designed and, you know, editing has been done, you know, you could build a workflow that would allow you to publish that, which would fire the static site builder to build that site and publish it statically. And that's what we're doing. We're doing POC with Gatsby um, and other static builders to sort of enable that workflow because we hear again and again that people really want their site to be able to be served on serverless platforms or just completely statically. And that's, that's we want to enable that, not saying that that's the way to go or the future forward for everything in .CMS, but, um, but it's an important capability, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, it looks like we have time for maybe one, possibly two more questions. So the first one then is, where would I publish or run a single page app? Well, um, I mean, currently, if you wanted to run the example.cms single page app, um, all that takes is a, is a node server somewhere. Um, you, that could be run in a uh, in Heroku, or um, it could be run in any kind of serverless environment that'll that'll take a Docker container. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be, but but it does take a node server, so it's not like you can just publish it statically to uh, an S3 bucket. Um, and that it takes that node server in order to provide the editing and preview capabilities that are built into the system. Uh, but yeah, there, I mean, there are a number of places you can run node servers. Okay, thanks, Will. One last question for you. How would I save content to .CMS from an SPA? Well, I mean, even from a SPA or even from a static site, I mean, you can call the you can call the .CMS APIs to save content, to push content into a .CMS environment. Um, you know, that's really how the forms and the form tool that we've built um, that's available on the client side, you know, that's using the, those same APIs. So, um, you know, we've worked hard to make those available and easy to use. And that's just part of being a headless content solution or hybrid content solution. Okay, great. 
Thank you so much, Will, for answering those questions. I want to be conscious of everyone's time, so we will wrap it up now. But if you have any other questions or wanted to learn anything else about um, personalization for single page apps, please do reach out to us and we would be happy to uh, go over it with you more. So thank you so much to uh, Stefan and Will for today and thank you for joining us. Bye everyone.